We're going to paint pan pansies using as few strokes as possible and value dabs. Let's get started. All right, here are the value dabs, but I make these as I paint. I don't make these ahead of time because everything, if you paint, if you make your piles ahead of time, you might not be the they might not have the same relationship to each other that you're hoping to have. So the first segment is coming up right now, and I've slowed this down to two times as fast as I usually paint. And after this, we're going to speed it up. So here I am using a brush. I'm, I'm using, trying to use as few strokes as possible. I've made two piles on my palette right now, a dark uh, violet and also a lighter violet. But what I'm blocking in right now is just the darkest shapes that I see. That's all I care about is shapes. I'm not thinking about the flowers at all. You can also see I put a little bit of Naples yellow just on the uh, where I saw the lightest lights because I don't want to drive over them. I don't use uh, masking fluid. Uh, I just have to paint around my whites. So that's just a reminder for me. So like I said, this is two times as fast as I usually paint. So you can see it's, it's pretty slow and deliberate. I load the brush. The paint is thick. Um, almost as thick as gravy, maybe maybe even thicker than that sometimes, because I don't want to have to make a second pass. I don't want this to look labored, and like I said, I want to use as few strokes as possible, so that means I have to really load my brush with a lot of pigment and make sure that it's thick from the very beginning. In essence, what I think I'm trying to say in a long way is that I'm, this is probably more the way uh, a, maybe an oil painter or an acrylic painter might paint. I'm not sure. It's just something that I prefer to do. Now I'm going to start with my value card. Remember I said at the beginning that I'm going to make this painting according to value shapes, not the individual pansies. So I have my darks in and I have my lights, my, which is going to be the white of the paper, and now I have to get busy with whatever is a mid-tone. And there are a lot of mid-tones. Now what I could do and what some people do is add water to their color in order to get to a mid-tone. And I don't want to do that because then I'll lose the brightness and also the intensity of color. So I'm going to mix my mid-tones. So that's what I'm doing here. So, and I'm looking, those value dabs on the left, I'm looking relative. What have I got so far? So far I have one medium and a dark, and I'm comparing those. Now I need another medium. So I added a little bit of Naples yellow, probably to some, um, oh, I'm guessing that's probably a red of some kind, just to tip it a little bit lighter, but it's still going to be a mid-tone. Because remember, anything that isn't as light as the paper or that little bit of Naples yellow that I put in at the very beginning has to be a mid-tone. Most of the painting is mid-tones, but I got to be consistent. I got to make sure that my mid-tones are all about the same value, meaning all around the same lightness, or darkness. And that's all I'm thinking in my head right now. I'm thinking value, shape, lightness, darkness. How is that relative to something else? Now what's really important here though is that I do have to do a lot of mixing because I can't paint the peony with just one color. Uh, peony. I paint a lot of peonies. I can't paint the pansy with just one color because when you look at a pansy, for example, there are a lot of colors happening even in a one colored one. So I mix up a number of reddish kind of violets that come close to matching the photograph. My goal is not to match the photograph. My goal is to match value. In other words, how light or dark a color is rather than the, um, the actual color in the photograph. I'm actually pushing color here because the photograph didn't have colors that were as bright as what I want to use in the actual painting. So that's what I'm doing here. So, so far I've got my darks. If you squint, you can see what's dark. And if you squint, you can see what's light. And now, like I said, I'm still busy on those mid-tones using as few strokes as possible. I have to be really careful here. So it's just simplifying what you could spend hours and hours and hours on. Um, and now look at the, the value dabs on the side. So far, these are all mid-tones, except for that, I don't think that purple or that violet one is a mid-tone. I have to squint and see. It's it's going to be a mid-tone. It's going to fit in the mid-tone category because it's not as, not as dark as any as the violets I put in at the very beginning. So, so far, everything that I put in there is a mid-tone, except for that yellow. 
that is not as dark as the midtones. So I need a dark yellow. So I mixed, uh, I used um, a little bit of, what did I use here? Probably some burnt sienna because I knew I needed a dark yellow. Now I can stretch out my value range a little bit more because to go into what I would consider a mid-toned yellow. It's lighter than the mid-tones I have so far, but when I squint my eyes, it's definitely darker than the white of the paper or that Naples yellow that I put in as a place saver to begin with. So I'm sticking with a plan, definitely sticking with a plan. All those value dabs are considered mid-tones, and there are a lot of them, which but I could not have created these dabs at the very beginning because I didn't know, I didn't know what my shapes were. I, you have, I have to do it as I go along. Maybe there are people that make these um, mixing decisions at the very beginning, but I don't think so because everything is relative to everything else. So I have to, you know, the further you go in, kind of the more complicated your decisions make on the, become, or rather in a way they actually become easier because there are just not that many options. Uh, now underneath, there's a shadow to consider there, and that was a mid-tone shadow. So I used a triad there, Naples yellow, a, a red, alizarin, crimson probably, and a ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna come back and adjust that, but I wanted to, um, to place that in, because I need that. And now I need to consider the, um, the glass that the flowers are in. And I decided to paint it with neutral colors. I'm still sticking with the value plan. I saw mid-tones in there. So I'm baking those mid-tones, but I'm using grays. And the gray that I'm using is mixed from all the other many of the colors that I've already used in the painting. It would not be a good idea right now to bring in something that I haven't used before, because it just kind of won't match. It kind of won't go with everything else. So again, I'm simplifying. You know, I could spend hours and hours and hours on the crystal of the glass. But that, that's not my goal. I understand that's a goal for many people, but that's just not my goal. I want to use as few strokes as possible. And if you look on the left at the value dabs, everything there is still mid-toned. I don't have any darks in there, and I don't have any lights. So that has been my, that's been my map all the way along. Put in a little bit of neutral for the background. The reason for neutral in the background, especially in this case, is because the neutral, if you put surround color, with neutrals, your color is going to look more vibrant. And I we needed an adjustment to the shadow underneath the vase, which I'm doing right now. And I think right about here, I'm feeling that feeling that I'm probably just about done. You know, if I was to keep going, then I'm going to use too many brush strokes and things are going to become too precious. What I'm doing right now, just to satisfy myself, is making sure that there are no complete whites left where where they shouldn't be. So if something is on the shadow side of the flowers and it and it's white, I have to get rid of it because anything in shadow, even if it's white, is going to be darker than the white of where the sun hits. So that's and now I'm putting in some very dark darks. Very few of them, and I only made one value dab, but one thing about it is you when you look at the value dab chart chart there, you can see the difference between the one dark that I put in at the very end to sort of enhance my other decisions and all the other midtones. Everything else is a midtone. So that's how I paint pansies. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. Many people who watch these don't join and it costs you nothing. It's free. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.